All right. Any other questions before we move on to mitosis? Excellent. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to kind of put aside our um, notes on that, and we're going to get out our graphic organizer on the cell, the steps rather, the steps to mitosis. So it's this graphic organizer right here, and it's double-sided, and it says mitosis modeling diagrams. So this is what we're going to be using for the rest of class today. And like I said, you're going to be working in pairs. You've got some materials on your table. I'll explain to you what they are and what you're going to do with them. But first, we're going to take about 10 minutes to talk a little bit about these phases. Did you get one? Everybody get one? Everybody has one? Yeah? Um, so we're going to start to talk a little bit about the phases. And I want you to, I know you took these in your notes, but I want you to jot some stuff down here. Okay? Because in a little bit with your partner, you're going to do some modeling and you're going to, you're going to draw what you see. So we're going, to, we're going to capture some information about the steps to mitosis on the left, on the right side. And then we're going to be drawing on our, or yeah, we're going to be drawing on the left side. All right, so give me a second. I'm going to switch my PowerPoint really quickly. And we are going to begin talking about, oh, I'm sorry, chill. About this, sorry, I mean, we're just really drawing. Right okay. Are you guys ready? Yes. Human error, there's not supposed to be two prophases. How did that happen? So prophase, prometaphase, what's on the back? Metaphase, anaphase, telophase, cytokinesis. Oh, okay, well, it's just extra space for you to have. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out, Valentina. All right, so we're gonna talk about cellular reproduction, mitosis, and cytokinesis. How many of you have ever learned this in your life? Like, show me, the, raise your hand if you've learned the steps to mitosis in your life. Okay, thank goodness. I don't see, Alfredo, you never learned this? You did? Oh, okay, I didn't see your hand. So we've all learned about this, right? You saw it in seventh grade. You saw it in eighth grade. You saw it in ninth grade. Nothing has changed since then, all right? So that's the good thing. Um, I keep telling you that the unit, this unit is a little bit more um, just comfortable, and you're going to see why. <laughs> Sure, she doesn't believe me, Valentina doesn't believe me. All right, so let's talk a little bit about eukaryotic cell reproduction. And if you, um, I know you got your graphic organizer from yesterday. The, the smallest part of a cell cycle, the, less, the least amount of time, the less um, volume, I would say, of like a pie chart would be mitosis, the mitotic phase. And so this is when the cell actually divides. All of the work, the hard work, was already being done in, S1, in G1, S, and G2. And so um, this is just really taking everything that we did, all of our work that the cell did at the beginning in interface, and then just kind of div dividing it up, right? Divvying it up into two new daughter cells. But it's really important because we get genetically identical daughter cells. So maybe in that extra space that you have at the top where it's prophase twice, you can add that really important note. So that's something that I really want you guys to have as a driving key point is that the daughter cells are genetically identical. So I know you probably wrote this down already in your notes, but I really, there's no harm in doing it again. Daughter cells are genetically identical. So you're making this connection back to sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, when you learned all of these things. Hopefully that's something that your, your teacher made sure to make a point of. But if not, I want you to make sure that you um, can really, really take this with you because when we talk about other types of cell division, we don't have um, so much I identical cells. So when we talk about meiosis, um, which is the reproduction of the gametes of the reproductive cells, we don't have identical cells. And that's a good thing, right? Otherwise we would all look the same in this room. So because we look different, we'll talk about meiosis later, but mitosis makes it so that we all have the same structure of our ears and our arms and our legs and our fingers. And that's what mitosis does. It keeps us um, a little bit more normed as humans. So we've got unicellular and multicellular mitosis. And we're going to focus on, um, we are multicellular organisms, right? And so in unicellular organisms, we have cell division that um, makes a copy. But in multicellular organisms, we have cell division that we use for growth, for repair, to make new organisms, 
from a fertilized egg. So here's something else you can add in that first box is that we undergo multicellular mitosis and also that it's for these purposes. It's for growth, it's for repair, and it's for new formation of an organism. And that's a big, big part of why we are so complex. So chromosomes are something that we've also already discussed. We've discussed how DNA is wrapped up and it's packed up into these um, really amazing packages in this double helix that I've shown you before and I'll bring out again. We've got this really great organization, right? Um, and it's got proteins, it's got histones, it's got all of these great things that help package like 10 feet of DNA into one cell. Um, but we're gonna talk about what happens when that DNA comes apart, what happens when it unravels. So that's what we will focus on today. So we know that the DNA is coiled up, we know that it's really well organized so that we don't lose any integrity of it, and we don't lose any information, but we're gonna talk about when we have to um, divide it and separate it. So in your um, little cups that you have, you've got some pipe cleaners, you've got some plastic cups, and you've got some beads. So if you would, with your partner really quickly, find me a pair, make me one chromosome. Give me one whole chromosome with your partner. So make me one whole chromosome. Make me one whole chromosome, yeah. Those are chromatids. So each individual pipe cleaner is a chromatid. Show me a chromosome with your partner. So perfect. You can use a bead to represent the centromere. You can do whatever you want for right now. It doesn't matter to me. Show me a chromosome. Show me a chromosome really quickly. What does that look like? You can use beads to help you with the centromeres. Perfect, let me see. Isaac, you guys. So if you don't already know, Isaac and Sean have already created their first chromosome. Yeah, that was quick. Here you go, thank you guys. Okay, perfect. So you're gonna get to play with these a lot more in just a moment. Excellent, the ladies here have two chromosomes and Cassidy used the old fashioned way that I wouldn't just kind of intertwine them. And Sophia used a little bead to show that centromere. So, what do we have? Um, let's just do some really quick identification. Uh, chromatids versus chromosomes. So will you show me, will you guys, uh, with, the, with your partner, will you make them now just the chromatids? So show me the chromatids. There you go, undo them, yes. All you're doing is you're removing that chromosome pair and you're making some chromatids, perfect. So you've got your chromatids, excellent. Thank you, Dana's got both of hers in one hand. Perfect. Osvaldo, where's your chromatids? There you go. Thank you. Okay. So chromatids versus chromosomes. Um, that's important to understand, and that's an important thing to understand in mitosis. A chromatid is a single, right? It's a single strand. It's a single piece. And when we put them together, we have a chromosome. So chromatids is a single versus chromosome. It's two of them put together, right? Two pieces of this DNA. And so we've got that centromere that's holding them together, which is what your bead is representing. And it makes it so that they're easily removed. Did you guys have a hard time um, forming or separating your chromosomes? No, right? It was really easy. Well, that's the whole purpose of the reason why we have chromatids created the way they are and put together the way they are to make a chromosome. It's because we need to separate them easily. So as we go through, let's look at the phases. So I want you in your own words, in your own understanding, in your own summary, let's talk really quickly about what happens during prophase. And we're gonna jot it down in our graphic organizer and then we are going to um, do a quick, uh, just a, a recap of what's happening in each phase. So you should have that graphic organizer out. So what's happening in prophase? So one, chromatin fibers condense. What does that mean? That means that we are going from this spaghetti bowl of loose DNA and we're starting to create this beautiful organized structure that we have that is the chromosome that you guys created. So we've got, that's one quick sentence that you can use. Chromatin condenses to form a chromosome. So if I had to take all of these words, because it's a lot of words, I would just write chromatin condenses into chromosomes. Easy, quick, short, to the point. Chromatin condenses into chromosomes. You've got these really cool organ, like, I guess they like organelles or they're like, um, uh, I don't know how we would 
classify them, but they're called cohesins. They're like proteins. Uh, I think they're proteins. And they, they hold the chromatin arms together. We've got the nucleus, so the nucleoli that disappear. So we've got that, that really um, important kind of vessel that's keeping everything protected. Um, and it's re being removed. And then we form the spindle. So that's another big thing that happens. The spindle forms. And that spindle is going to be important. And that's what we talked about. Um, and Osmo talked about it when we talked about G2 and how it's an important piece because it's what's going to separate these chromatids from each other. This chromosome is going to get separated into two. So we've got chromatin condensing into chromosomes. We've got cohesins that are holding things together. We've got the disappearance of that shelter, that, that um, capsule that's keeping everything inside. And then we've got that spindle that's forming. And once we've got all of that set up, then we can go ahead and start moving our genetic information. So that was prophase. Does anybody need more time with this slide? You've got these in your notes too. So we're just kind of um, capturing and transferring our thoughts a little bit into a better organized way, shorter, more concise. Right? Cool. Okay. Anybody need this anymore? All right. Let's go on. So this is what prophase looks like in a like cartoonish version, right? We've got the spindles that are starting to form. So our DNA is kind of all like in a spaghetti bowl, but it's starting to condense. You've got this envelope around here, the nucleola that's starting to break down. And then you've got the spindles that are forming right outside. They're ready. Um, we have an in-between phase that maybe you didn't focus on too much in your ninth grade biology class that we give a little bit more depth to in AP Bio, and that's prometaphase. Prometaphase is we just continue the movement, continue the condensation into chromosomes, continue the removal of that nuclear envelope. And so that nuclear envelope starts to come apart, and we can't see it anymore. The centrosomes that are on each side of the cell are starting to appear. Um, we've got the mitochondria, I'm sorry, the microtubules that are starting to show up as well. So here we've got a lot of like staging, a lot of physical structures that are getting out, either out of the way or they are getting into place. So we've gotten rid of the nuclear envelope. We've gotten the microtubules are taking their place so they can start dividing stuff and moving stuff. And we've got these kinetic cores. And so the kinetic cores, basically what they're going to do is they're going to help to kind of reel in those sister chromatids as they're being separated. So the kinetic core microtubules attach to each other and they're going to start moving stuff. So they're all structural. So in prometaphase, we have a lot of structural pieces that are coming into place. Okay. Make sure to leave that left side blank. I know as some of you are drawing, which is great. Leave some space in there so that you can draw what you model with your partner today. Okay. Prometaphase. Are we cool on this? Does anybody need any more, any more time with this slide? So big, big takeaways, structural stuff, right? No more nuclear envelope, structural kinetic cores, microtubules are getting ready to separate things. Perfect. All right. Are we good? Yes? Yes? Cool. Okay. That's what it looks like in an electron scanning microscope. You can start to see those poles forming. You can start to see those spindles kind of getting into place. Um, here's another view of these non-kinetic core microtubules. In other words, these are the ones that are they're gonna they're kind of free and they're ready to start keeping that sh the cell giving it some shape, getting ready for the next phase. Next phase is metaphase. Metaphase is the longest phase of mitosis, and this is where our double-stranded chromosomes line up on the metaphase plate. So this is the phase that I think most students remember because everything's right in the middle. So you've got some great bullet points here to guide you. Um, longest phase, chromosomes line up, period. Like, nothing more than that. And we sometimes we call it the equatorial plate um, or the metaphase plate. There's lots of different views here for you to see. We've got this kind of cartoonish diagram. We've got some real microscopic images. We've got this other like version that uses like different energies to show you um, how everything's starting to organize. But in short, we've got this nice lining up. And this is going to be really important because this is going to allow for there to be 
um, kind of like a, an equity or um, a symmetry in the cell and in the chromosomes. Cool. All right. Are we ready to go on? Almost done. Anaphase. Anaphase. Oh, there's a lot in this slide, but we can just condense that. In anaphase, this is the basics for this, guys, is the chromosomes are pulled to opposite poles. So our sister chromatids are pulled away from each other and they're moving away to each of the poles and the spindles are the ones that are grabbing them and pulling them. And I always think in my mind, ever since I've learned this, is anaphase away. And I always think about the sister chromatids and they're kind of bent and they, um, and I, I've, I've said this before, like in other class, I think in anatomy, but it, it reminds me when the chromosomes are, the chromatids are like this, I think of anaphase away and their sisters, right? So I'm like, no, sister, don't leave me, don't go. They're pulling, being forced apart from your sister and you don't want to leave them. Well, some of you might want to, but in this case, we don't want them there. That's what reminds me of how the structure of the chromatid is and they're going away from each other and they're like, no, don't let, please don't leave me. But they are, they have to be separated because we need identical daughter cells. So that's our anaphase. Um, chromosomes, chromatids are pulled to opposite poles and the spindles are pulling them. All right, any questions so far? I've been going kind of quick and I didn't, haven't stopped to ask you any questions. Again, I know you're comfortable with this. I know you know this. You've known this for some time now, so. All right, lastly, so we can finish it up, is our um, telophase and our cytokinesis. So in telophase, that's when we have our last kind of movement. Our structures are, are coming to uh, a place where they're going to kind of reorganize to make our two new daughter cells. So our two daughter nuclei are there. They, they reappear. Um, their nuclear envelopes come back. So we're getting ready to provide that kind of capsule encapsulation around this, this cell and the genetic information. And then our chromosomes go back to this unwound spaghetti bowl type of organization. They're no longer condensed in these nicely, tightly packed, coiled chromosomes. They're starting to just kind of let their hair down again and let loose again. Um, and they're getting ready to go back to the way they started, to go back to the way the cell started before we divided it. So telophase, two daughter cells, uh, their nuclei are forming, the envelope returns, and the chromosomes unwind again. They go back to that kind of relaxed phase. Yeah. So like the normal mm -hmm. stage or like style of the cell's DNA is not winded? Like yep, that? exactly. That's a great question. Did you guys hear Valentina's question? So then she's asking, is the DNA normally in just this unwound, unkept, unorganized state? Yes, it is. Why? Because when we are replicating it, we need it to be ac accessible. And if it's all tightly wound up, we're not going to be able to get to it. mRNA is not going to be able to be um, copied as easily. It's not going to be able to be unwound as easily. So it is in a relaxed state, yeah. So then when it says that in G1 and S that the DNA uncoils, So it means that it is in its, it's still in that stage. It's trying to let you know that it's in that oh, un... It's not like uncoiling, but it's just uncoiled. It's uncoiled. It continues oh. to be uncoiled. But if we use that as our starting phase, if we use G1 as like our start, we have to say we're going to start with uncoiled DNA. And then in S phase, we do the replication. And then in G1 phase, we get the structural stuff ready. And then we coil it up. So yeah, that's a great question. Go ahead. Um, so we've got that unwinding. Lastly, and so here's what that nice cartoon picture looks like. Lastly, we are in cytokinesis. So what is cytokinesis? Cytokinesis is simply the total division of each of these cells, and they're going into their daughter cells. Um, they're making their, they're finding their own freedom. They're becoming their unique cells, and that's what happens in cytokinesis. We've got the cytoplasm literally splitting. So cyto for cytoplasm and kinesis is for moving or for movement or for separation. So that's really it that happens in cytokinesis, that um, you have complete separation of the cytoplasm. And so what's really interesting to find out about cytokinesis in animals is that if they don't fully separate, if, they, if that cytokinesis does not happen, you're going to get um, what we call a, a multinucleated cell. This means that we're going to have a cell in an animal, it's less frequent, 
um, that doesn't ha that does not have that complete furrow. It doesn't completely separate. Um, it happens a little bit more regularly in things like algae and plants and fungi, but in humans it doesn't necessarily happen very often. And so that's when we get um, a cell that's going to be kind of like two cells lumped together, which is interesting. In algae you can see it's got a cell wall, so it looks a little bit different. Um, in other plants, again, you can see how there's a little bit of a difference in the way that the cytokinesis actually occurs in plant cells. But in animals, this is our beautiful a cell that's got that cleavage furrow, that little division point there, and everybody's like, oh, it looks like a peach, or it looks like a butt. Um, yes, it's okay to laugh at that. That is what it looks like, and that's a good way for you to remember what it looks like. Um, all right, questions on cytokinesis or on anything about mitosis in these steps that we just went through in the last 15 minutes. We'll talk a little bit more about, we'll talk all about DNA replication. Um, coming up tomorrow and next week. So let's talk about our activity. So we've got a good 15 minutes that we can work together with our partners and we can kind of bring everything to a close and really understand what's happening here. So you've got these materials. Now I'm not gonna tell you what to do with them. I'm just gonna give you the materials. I'm gonna highlight what you have and then I'm going to let you work with your partner. So you've got two cups, Y2, I don't know. You decide what you're going to do with these two cups. You have eight pieces of pipe cleaner. They're different colors. That might mean something as well for you. That might be a clue. And then you've got four beads. And these are going to be, oh well, I'm not going to tell you what you're going to do with the beads. You're going to do something with them. So what I would like for you to do with your table partner is I'd like for you to model every single step of the mitotic phase, or phases rather. I want you to use all of the materials given to you, so you're gonna have to figure out how to use them. I will be walking around, I see you guys are already formulating a plan, I'll be walking around checking with you. Here's the caveat, really quickly before you get started. Please draw every single step that you model, and you will have enough time to do that and also for us to close up our discussion today. So go ahead and get started. I'm gonna walk around and see what you're doing with your materials. And uh, you let me know what you're doing. Yes. You're missing a pipe cleaner. So sorry, I will give you one. Yeah, it's like that. It's gonna be uh, another one. So, okay. All right, let's go. Let's see what we're doing here. So in the first one, it's condensing into chromosomes. So some of them will start like getting together. I don't have not all. I have this one. So some of them would start condensing. You do it too. No wait. Did she mean two separate ones? Because like. So you're gonna show. You're gonna draw. I don't think so. It doesn't really matter. So oh, yeah, because that way you can show that it's like a point. Like that. What do we got, girls? What's going on here? In the first one, they start condensing, right? Yes, they do. So it's like saying some of them aren't still condensed, but like some of them are. You can, you can, you can make that. Definitely, you can make that assumption, and you can make that um, happen. How would you? What would that look like? Well, yeah. So, so yeah. So, so the thing is, is remember we talked about this. This is a model, right? And so we don't know exactly what goes first if there's if they're like oh, okay there's four there let's number one goes first and you go second you go third so when we say they start to condense we're talking about how they're beginning to take that shape you in your mind if you want to think of it as okay one is starting and they don't all get done until her phase so um, yeah. then you can do that so you can show that there are some that are already that are organized and then there's some that are still in this kind of like spaghetti bowl, spaghetti bowl shape what are you gonna do with the cups oh well it's like it's uh, okay <laughs> that you can do that awesome that works okay so um as you're talking about this i want you to draw what it is you're seeing so you're seeing that chromosome one is condensed and are they two separate pieces so you have two cups. There, does that mean that there's there are two different like nuclear envelopes, two different nuclei, or are you gonna keep it like this? We're gonna or? keep them like that until they separate. Okay. You wanna? Okay. Just checking. Just wondering. Is that right? Because the cups. It is right, right? Because they're all together. <laughs> so I was thinking maybe if you use this as your nucleus and like that. 
but you guys can do whatever you want. So I was thinking that's in my mind, that's what I would do with it. But if you want to make this your whole cell like that, it's all good. Somebody's just gonna have to hold it, right? To represent to represent <laughs> that that is in one nuclei, right? This are this is all happening within only one. So I gave you two for a reason, but I'm gonna tell you why. Oh, you could do it like that. Cool. Okay, perfect. So draw what you see. Okay, okay. So, are we drawing the first box or second one? Second one? Uh, I'm gonna draw cups. Oh, it's just a cup. I don't know how to draw a cup. I'm so gonna pretend like I know how to draw a cup. Spaghetti. 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 That one. One. Yeah. 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 Okay. Like this, like this. Okay. Like this, right? Because then they get to their pool. That makes some sense. What are we doing, guys? How's it going? What step are we on? Um, we're, we're going to go to add a face. Okay. Ooh, look at you. I'm confused as to why they're different colors. Is it just for us to be able to visualize it better, or is there a purpose that I did not no, see? No, so where did Chromos come from? Where did you get your Chromos from? Okay, but who did they come from? Okay, yeah. yeah. Who did you get your hair from? Parents. Your parents. Yes. 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 And are your parents identical? Yeah. Right. There you go. See, I'm not going to give you the answer. You know it. What step are you guys asking? So this represents still one. Oh, I like what you're doing with the cups. I like that. So, what are these two cups representing? The two cells. The two cells. So, you've already divided two cells? No, we're on prophase. You're on prophase. Okay, so then, do we have two cells during prophase yet? Do you? No. So, then, what should you do? How should you model this properly so that you show only? Andale, there you go. Perfect. Okay. So, when you're asking me, what do, what do they mean about what? The two opposite. Okay. The two opposite ends. Like, what does it mean? So the ends. Of the, if this is one cell, mm -hmm. we're talking about literally the ends are like okay. the poles. Okay. Yeah. So you can, yeah, you can move uh, with your hands. Yes, ma'am. That it's breaking. Yeah. You could do that. You could do it like that. Or you could completely take the cups out altogether and say, like, okay, the nuclear envelope's breaking, and then the nuclear envelope's gone. So they don't have a container. Right? Oh, okay. You could kind of say, though, it's hard with these, yeah. right? You can't say, like, let me crush, let me cut part of the cup out. <laughs> or, or I liked how you thought about removing it that way. But essentially what it's saying is that this is starting to disappear. Right? So that's why I gave you the cup so you can kind of visualize. You're doing a good job. All right, so did we figure out where we're at next? Now we just need to have a little... No more cups. They go away, exactly. So metaphase means that they make it on Yes, it's either the chorus mm -hmm. form central in each context, mm -hmm. so like this. That's it, exactly. Then the centrosomes are in the opposite end of the nuclear area. So the centrosomes, we're not, we don't have um, uh, anything to represent it, but basically okay. all that's going to be is it's going to be like a structure that's going to start to um, be become visible, so that we or it's going to become usable, so that it can start moving these things around. So you can almost use this like that as a kinetic or this. So it's just, it, we don't have a piece for the model on that, and that's a, I'm glad that you pointed that out, um, but that's really what that means. It's, it's, it's saying that they're getting ready on each end so they can start moving things, right, and getting them in place. Those are the centrosomes? Those are the centrosomes. Mm -hmm. okay. And the centrosomes are going to be part of the spindle that helps to, like I said, move everything around. Okay. So, but that's a great question, and that's missing from the model. It's not a good model. <laughs> So why do we just draw axes and then like dots on them? Mm -hmm. Oh, because, because it goes back to the... And two opposite... Okay.
Okay, I'll so what do you do with the others? Do you have more? Well, I mean, it should be more. So, okay, yeah, it's here. No, there's the other thing. This is the other thing. Perfect. Yes, it's good. So, the central is the same thing. It says here that the key, keynote. I can never pronounce that. Keynote coach here. Attach and move to the. So then they just. I think they just. Uh, from out of phase. I'm just going to draw it with that they're moving to the center. Okay, so. That is in that's what they're doing. So now I'm out of So what you use all your in the middle? I think they would just line up. Line up? So by now you're going to do that. Alright. Okay. So when they're going to be they look kind of like with that. Because you remember that you have the same on each, so one should be two and two. So now they should be, they should be on the end. So you should have four parts. Are you going to then take this? Okay. No, we're just going to do that. No, that is one, because it'll murder or twist it. So then that happens. Because, look, it's like this. And there's two of them, right? And they're split into one and one. They're pulled apart. No, it's, it's like... No, it's here to say chromosomes and not chromatids. It's, it's still splitting. Right here. Yeah, you're saying. Okay. Chromosomes are one when they're combined. Yeah. Because then they're going to be able to be separate. They will wait for the choice. For... Anaphase. <laughs> that means our wording is wrong. Yeah, the word anaphase, they're like a chromosome and they're yeah. like that, right? Okay. It's chromatids. Then my notes are wrong too. Exactly. Okay. Do that and then you can just form an Excel. Yeah, it's just chromosomes. It's wrong though. Story thing we wrote down right now. Hmm. You think we did? So from then on out, all of us Four holes from the middle. Two identical I'm going to go a whole bunch of who is still working? Oh, yes, I lost the hands off you right there. They are here, then here, together. No, I think they are. But it's just saying that the chromosomes are pulled to opposite sides. So I'm guessing, yeah, they are being pulled together. Yeah. Something like that. This is what I do. So I, so you guys, really quickly, did you catch that like on the on the slides from Nimsy that it says that in anaphase that the chromosomes are pulled apart? Okay, so yes, it does say that chromosomes are pulled to opposite poles. And one thing that's missing from there is what? What's missing? Chromatids. They're chromatids, exactly. So I'm glad you caught that, and I just want to make sure that you make a note of that. We're talking about when the chromosomes are pulled apart, they're pulled apart in their sister chromatids. I'll be right with you. Yeah, and then they breathe. They unwind. They unwind again. And so when they unwind, what is going to happen? That's where I'm confused. That's where you're confused. Oh, okay, that's okay. So then what happens? You're on, you're on telophase, right? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so then it talks about how they are, well, we don't have that here, but if you notice, and I'll, just, I'll show you right here in telophase, they are pulled apart. Do you see how they're pulled apart to the opposite ends? And they stay unwound like that. So all we're doing is we're saying that the these kinetic cores that are like fishing rods, fishing reels rather, that are reeling them in, they bring them over. And so they start, they're still unwound, but they bring them over and they separate them. Okay. And then and what then, happens? And then the nuclear envelope forms yeah. around them. Exactly. The nuclear envelope forms around them. And now what do we have? Well, they're kind of close together, right? Yeah. And then what happens? What's our last phase? The after single phase? So what does it look like in your model? Show me with your cups. Okay. okay. <laughs> and that's... So it's just separate. Yep, two separate doctors. Okay. Yep, exactly. Good job, girls. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, pause. Real quick. All right, so um, I went to every single table. I was so glad to see... I was so glad to see everybody modeling really, really well. Um, thank you so much for being so involved and so invested in this. We're going to go ahead and put this to rest today. Tomorrow we're going to keep talking a little bit more about this process. Um, thank you guys. You can put your materials inside and you can go ahead and get ready to go. Thank you.